Have you ever wondered what it's like to go on a first date in your 60s? It's all coming up next at Style at a Certain Age. Well, since we're all in holiday party mode with 2022 fast coming to an end, I just thought it'd be fun just to do a little q and A. I I do this every once in a while, although it has been probably over a year since I've done something like this. And I ask you to send me your questions over on Instagram and here at YouTube. And I also just wanted to share. So I float things like that up on YouTube in the community tab. And I also share daily looks and what's going on over on the blog. So always check the community tab because we always have something posted every day. But I am answering your questions and I, and I had a variety, definitely a variety of questions. So I'll take about 10 because we just, we don't want to go too terribly long because then it's just kind of, I don't know, then I'm just kind of going on and on and on, right? Uh, so we'll keep it short and sweet. So I'll and... go to my YouTube family first. And one of the questions that you asked was, how do you rotate your new styles? Do I get rid of things or am I only showcasing new things? So that's a really good question. And one thing that's very near and dear to me is being able to keep items in your closet on a rotating basis. So I definitely have my favorites that I keep year in and year out until I wear them out or they're really no longer in fashion. But I am a classic style dresser. That is my style. It's always been my style. I lean towards a preppy look as well, which is a little bit more sporty. But I keep many, many, many of my clothes for many years, and especially my accessories, because I think it's so important to invest in accessories. And those easily carry over from year to year. But since I am a style and fashion blogger, I mean, actually, I'm a lifestyle blogger. We, we do a lot over on the blog, health and wellness is really important to me and we do beauty and yada, 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 you all know that, but I do have to showcase new items and I do partner with brands. And when I partner with a brand and we always share this, but that it's sponsored, but then they typically send me clothes too. So if you see that I'm partnering with Talbot's, then you know that those clothes that I'm wearing and I'm sharing with you are also from Talbot's and they have gifted those to me. So I do end up with quite a lot of clothes and I only have a limited amount of space, just like you, even though I've, I have things pretty organized, but I do donate many, many of my clothes and I love to donate to women's shelters. I think that's very important to help other women that don't have the means to buy new clothes. So that's definitely one way that I share my excess amount of clothes, but I also, and so you'll have to stay tuned. So I partnered with Poshmark this past summer and I had never had a Poshmark, I guess, store or closet before. So that really gave me the impetus to start a Poshmark store. And I have a lovely assistant that is really helping me get that up and running. So stay tuned because we'll have a lot of listings over on Poshmark that I think that many of my readers would love to have. So yes, I have classic style items that I wear year in and year out. I do have new styles and yes, I do have to donate them. And then now I'm opening up a Poshmark store. So another question is how do I handle being a widow and be so happy? And that is a very, oh, it can be a very complicated question to answer. So Many of you know, I lost my husband of 35 years. We'd been married almost 36 years and he passed away in July of 2019. I cannot even believe it's been almost four years, but it, it really has been. So grief is definitely something that I've become accustomed to living with. And I have this wonderful graphic that I shared over on Instagram when because from time to time, I will talk about grief and dealing with it and how I personally deal with it. But so in years gone by, I think the thinking was that grief diminished over time, that it was very prevalent when you first lost that loved one, and then it would start to just diminish. But I truly believe, and I will float this graphic in, that grief is always there. It stays the same size, but what happens is your life starts to rebuild 
and it gets bigger around your grief. So you are able to incorporate joy again and happiness again and fun times again, even though you are so missing that very, very special person in your life. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get teary, but um, I have come to the realization that and I nicknamed um, my late husband, Mr. Style, years ago because he helped me actually start my, my blog and my YouTube channel. Very instrumental in that. Brilliant businessman. But, but Mr. Style will always be in my heart and he will always be a part of my life, even though he's not sharing it physically with me these days. How do I handle being a widow? How do I handle being single? Well, that's a whole, you know, that's a whole episode of YouTube and a blog post because it takes time. It takes effort. It takes a lot of work. Like anything in your life, you have to fight for it. Is it my favorite thing just to have me, myself, and I doing all the things in my household, you know, running my household and running my business. No, it's not. But I have completely accepted it and know that life is for the living. And Mr. Style knew this too. And he used to remind me of that when he knew that his days were numbered. And I truly believe that every day that I am here, that I have a purpose and I need to live my life and live it fully. So I hope I answered that question. It's really kind of a hard a hard question to answer, but that, that's how I deal with being a widow and finding joy in my life these days. Okay, the next question is a style question. And it uh, says, you don't limit silhouettes or color palettes like many stylists have told us through the years. What's your philosophy on that? So I do get this question quite a bit. And one thing that I will just emphasize is I do know the rules of style and fashion, but I do believe that you have to know the rules before you can break the rules. And I do love to break the rules, especially when it comes to style, because so many of us get hung up on having to have the perfect outfit every single time we walk out the door. That's really exhausting because I think it takes all the fun out of fashion and fashion at the end of the day should be fun. And that's why I will experiment with different silhouettes, even though I know it's not going to be the most flattering for my figure. I do like the oversized look, although I tend to not wear it all the time because I know that that's not the flattering shape for me or honestly for any woman. But do I incorporate that into my wardrobe? You better believe it because as I said, fashion should be fun. So I think it's important to know the rules, know how to put together an outfit, build your wardrobe on the classics, the basics, learn how to dress your body type, definitely know your colors. But then once you understand all of that, don't be afraid to step outside of the box, color outside of the box, because that's what brings fun into your fashion world. So the next question is, how many days per week do I exercise? And I always love to say I have a love-hate relationship with exercise because I love to hate it. So with that said, I absolutely love how I feel when a workout is finished. But am I thrilled to get up every day and go off to Pilates and Orange Theory? I'm absolutely not thrilled to do that, especially if it's a little cold and rainy. I'm kind of a fair weather exerciser in, in that regard. But I do know how I feel after I work out and I so appreciate my body. I'm, actually, I was just at Orange Theory just the other day. And when I'm, you know, a killing a really challenging workout, I'm like, you know what? I am so proud of myself. I am 64 and I am killing this workout where most people are half my age and even younger. So I understand that exercise is key to a balanced life and it's key, especially as we age, because we lose muscle at a very rapid rate. And I also want to keep flexible because flexibility keeps my balance. And there's so many key things that are going on with my body when I'm building muscle and flexibility. So to answer your question, I try to work out five times a week 
Sometimes it do doesn't always happen, but that's always my goal. Every week is five times. So I love to go to Orange Theory at least once or twice a week, Pilates two or three times a week, and then I have a Peloton, a spin bike in my workout room here at home. So I try to hop on that and then do some weight in between. So I aim for five times a week. Not, I don't always hit it, but that's my goal. And the next question is, how many hours per week do I devote to Instagram? And honestly, my philosophy about Instagram is it's always been one of those minor channels for me. The blog is the most important uh, because that is a channel. It's not even a channel. That's the only piece of real estate I own. Everything else is social channels. So with that, so Instagram, so I'm not an Instagram star. It's not my only platform, but I do devote a fair amount of time to Instagram and we do share reels over there. I do share daily outfits over there, but mostly I really like try to take the blog posts and then repurpose them over on Instagram or the same with YouTube. So how many hours do I devote? I would say maybe like 10 hours because there again, I have presences and other platforms and I take that content and then repurpose it. The next question is how many meals do I eat in a day? And that's also a really good question because I typically just have two meals a day or two and then one mini meal. So I incorporate intermittent fasting into my routine. So really it's very easy to understand it. So I have an eight hour window where I eat all of my meals and then 16 hours where I'm fasting. So for me, my window is typically 11 to seven or 12 to eight, really honestly, depending on how hungry I am after I work out. So my first meal isn't until noon. And then that's a fairly substantial meal. And then if I'm really hungry in between doesn't usually happen but i'll just have like a little snack or maybe a bar or some nuts or something like that to tide me over and then another fairly substantial meal about six or seven so i'd say two and a half meals per day and then i have another question how do i organize my closet and that is honestly one of the most important things to creating a beautiful outfit every day is having a streamlined and organized closet. And I'm always up there tweaking things and trying to figure out how to streamline my process even more. But one thing, and I, and I have some videos and we'll link them up. So I do have a process. So twice a year, I go through a big closet cleanse. So I start preparing for the next season. So I usually do that in January and July. So January is a couple of months before spring, but it really is prepping me for the big spring clean. So I take my items slowly. I start to transition them out, you know, things like really, because winter does not stick around in Georgia as long as other areas. So I start to rotate those heavier items and then I put them in bins and then I store them downstairs and then I start to bring my spring and summer up. So it really is just me going through my closet twice a year, seeing what no longer fits, what no longer works for me. Then I donate that or I will put it on my Poshmark channel. And then I slowly transition that, that season's clothes out and then bring the new season in. So I do that twice a year. And then here's a cute one. So any ideas on how to throw a New Year's Eve shindig for our little ones? And then they said that, that uh, her, and I'm guessing it's her grandchildren, rarely stay up to uh, greet midnight. But so how would I do that? And I'm going to share, I don't have any grandchildren, but I will share when my children were growing up and my mom used to come visit us and my husband was in the hotel business. And so they had a tradition where they, uh, my husband would set them up in a suite and then the, you know, then we packed the bag for my kiddos. And then my mom was, you know, she was in charge. And so really they just had a lot of fun. They ordered room service. And then I know my mom always had a cocktail and, you know, the boys had their hot chocolate and they would watch a marathon of movies. And then they also would try to stay up until midnight. But I just think that that would be a really fun tradition to carry on. When I have grandchildren, I think I would just rent a hotel suite, bring them all in, just have a lot of fun. I will order that cocktail too and watch a lot of movies. And then this is a question I know you all tuned in to hear answered. And that is, what is it like to go 
on a first date in your 60s. Although the question really was, uh, will I ever date again? And so I will share with you, yes, I have gone on dates. I am dating again. Now, am I dating anyone specifically? No, I'm not. But I have gone on actually quite a few dates in the past year or so since I did start dating again. And one thing I will share with you is nothing has changed when it comes to dating. What is different is how you meet people, but people are people and dating is dating. And it's very similar to what it was like when I was in my 20s and, and dating back then. So back to dating, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to put a beautiful outfit on, go out to dinner, meet someone new, meet someone interesting, keep my communication skills open because it's so different when you're talking to a family member or a lifelong friend and someone that you've never met before. So it has, you know, it ha but it has its ups and it has its downs. I have a whole series of things that I could share with you and maybe I will share that in future YouTube videos, what it's like to date in your 60s, uh, perhaps what outfit to wear on your first date. I know I'm not the only one that's back dating in their 50s and 60s. Actually, it's very, very common these days. So definitely out there, definitely not dating someone specific, but it has been a lot of fun and it has been very, very interesting. Well, I hope I answered one or two of your questions. Of course, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, leave a comment down below, or maybe a question for the next Q&A, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.